This is a message to you, the neoliberals, the SJWs, the fucking blue pills. The blue pills, the antifa, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> this is why you lost part two. You lost because you told the poor white working families in rural Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan that despite losing their jobs, despite their factories closing down and their communities emptying out, that they were the privileged ones because of their skin color, that they benefit from white privilege. You guys are the privileged ones. You. You guys are so fucking out of touch. You're sitting in your big comfy chairs in your large office spaces up in the ivory towers of university sociology departments. And you actually think we working class people give two shits and a fuck about your identity politics. You think we care about intersectional trans feminism when, look, I come from a working class family, all right? And the struggle doesn't discriminate. Our st the struggle is the same. Our parents work their hands off to provide a better future for us so we don't have to struggle. And when their jobs left, that dream left with them. And you actually think we care about fucking identity politics when the first thing that pops into our mind when we wake up is whether or not we're going to make a rent this month. Whether or, not we, whether or not we have money for food in our budget or whether or not our bronze tier Obamacare plan covers little Britney's weird cough Britney is sick so sick we don't know what's wrong with her it might be because we don't have enough money and we can only afford to feed her cold chicken tendies that's right that's right check your privilege and yet you and yet you guys are the real racist ones, but you've redefined the word racism to mean power, privilege, and pre prejudice. You've twisted the definition so that we can't use the word against you, but you can use the word against us and against anybody that disagrees with you. Because under this new definition, all white people are racist, all people that defend white people are either racist themselves or they're self-hating Uncle Tom's or Uncle Chang's. You've called people that disagree with you racist, racist, sexist, Nazis. You don't listen to us when we try to tell you why we believe what we believe. You've demonized us and, dehuman, and dehumanized us. So that, it's, so that in your mind, it's okay to punch us. Because what's more American than punching a Nazi, right? It's easy to punch a Nazi. And when we are the Nazis, it's easy to hang us from trees. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> you have one foot over the line right now. A line that you do not want to cross. You are normalizing violence. And if you don't believe me, look at what this past year has been. Your side has, ch has chased down Trump supporters. Beat them up. You've egged a woman that just wanted to be at a Trump rally. Yesterday, you pepper sprayed a woman that was no threat to you. She was talking to a camera crew. You pepper sprayed her because she was wearing a Trump hat. You threw rocks at people that just wanted to hear Milo speak. It, it doesn't matter that you disagree with Milo. You do not hit and attack and smash people with rocks just because they wanted to hear what he has to say. Once you cross that line, you're starting a war that you cannot win. You think you're so big and powerful. Step out of your bubble, step out of the liberal cities and look at the rest of the country. You're outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned. You, you cannot win this if it turns violent. If you normalize violence, if violence is okay, you cannot win. You can win by reaching out to conservatives, talking to them, talk to Trump supporters and ask them why they believe what they believe. And maybe, maybe, you'll find common ground. Maybe you might even convince us to adopt your positions. Or maybe we will we'll red pill you. Who knows? Can you put down your fist, take off your mask, fight with your words, not sticks and stones. Because if you do not change, 
you're going to lose. You need us on your side. You need to convince us why you're right. Because you can't kill us. You can't kill all of us. You cannot divide us. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> you need us on your side because Generation, Generation Z, the kids that are growing up and being, and being born right now, they're projected to be the most conservative generation in decades, more conservative than your grandparents. And we, millen we're, we millennials, we grew up with the internet. These kids are growing up in the internet, in a fully formed medium where they can spread their ideas and beliefs. They're gonna shit post better than any of us combined. They're, they're gonna harness beam magic better than any 400 pound 30 year old version. <laughs> the future is in their hands and they're on our side. So unless you change your ways, you've already lost. I gotta go home now. That's Bye. right! Please clap.